All right, everyone having a good time? This is day two, making history is what's going on here. So it's exciting. It's really exciting. And um, coming into this uh, panel, exposing scientism, um, it's really an incredible thing to put together a project, um, scientism exposed to. It was awesome being able to travel around meet with uh, the people that are going to be coming up on the stage really quickly um and again we had so many amazing you know discussions and putting what you're going to see tonight later on scientism exposed to it's the worldwide premiere and i'm so incredibly excited i don't know you know it's hard sometimes when you're doing this and seeing the excitement of just the conference but it's like double you have a double because again you you have this which is so massive but then you have the opportunity to do a premiere of something that you've worked on so hard, you've been able to, you know, be with people that have touched you, that you've learned from, that have, that's been part of your journey, and then to allow everyone to come all along that journey with me as I travel around and to get deeper into this topic, scientism. And for me, it's so much more. Now I was interviewed with a lot of media, and you know, for me, it's a lot more than the shape of the Earth. And I think for a lot of us, after we get to a certain point, it's just like. It's not really about the shape of the earth. It's more about something a lot bigger going on. And so that's why I really wanted to come up with scientism exposed, not only for that and getting and dressing scientism versus science, but also having people realize, you know, that they have been lied to, but have it in a way that they could give it to people. So I did it in a way as a tool, as an outreach tool that may maybe not scare someone away because it says flat earth, because for most people, I mean, this is the upper echelon of crazy, right? So sometimes you gotta gradually just work them in, you know, it's like figure out, hey, that's that's interesting, I'm gonna look into that, you know? And then one thing leads to the next, because while well, maybe it took us, you know, two months or two seconds or two years to get to this, some people it might take a whole lifetime, you know? Some, we don't, everyone kind of operates at a different level, so. But anyways, it was exciting to be able to put scientism exposed to, it's amazing to me that not only do I get to premiere a film, but again, the people that were in the film get to be here to see it the first time with me. So be able to experience that is just a phenomenal reality. And then also, you know, with my conference director, John Gabrielson, and Rick Hummers, the MC, they're also in it, right? So again, we get them all on the stage. And again, not only did they contribute and help so much making the film for what it was, but also they've helped so much here. So, you know, huge hand to, uh, you know, everyone that's kind of put the conference, made everything what it is. I mean, I want to first of all say that because I need to recognize that because it's so incredibly important to me. And again, they've come together, not just on the project, but also getting this all together and making it flow the way it has. And it's been awesome. Like, I mean, it's been amazing. Every element, you know, it's going time, computers are working, very little interruptions. It's, it's great. So I'm really excited about it. It's awesome. So it's with my great pleasure. I'm going to announce um, people that uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that subject called scientism. So I want to call up Rob Skiba, Joe Taylor, Rick Hummer, John Gabrielson, and Pastor Dean Odell. Get it all settled and everything. It's kind of obviously no rehearsal with this, but hey, we're going to get it going for sure right away. But it's awesome. Like I said, we have seat assignments. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you guys can like pull the mics off. You can kind of hand it to one another. I think that's the best way. If you want to just pull the mic off, Rob, and then just you guys can pass it, um, you know, when we kind of talk about different questions. But um, yeah, I mean, to be here, obviously, you know, with John Gabrielson and John Gabrielson, you know, I got to know him by, um, you know, it was Scientism Exposed, my first film, and he brought me down to his conference. And it's interesting that basically the first time meeting him was at his conference, and now he's directing my conference in the sense of this, how it all works out, how it's all orchestrated, how it comes together. It's, it's just a phenomenal thing. Obviously, Rob Skiba, just absolutely incredible to meet him, um, you know, and get all the input. And yeah, it's just, you're, you guys are in for a real treat tonight. I'm so incredibly happy for how everything turned out. Uh, Joe Taylor, I had time to spend with him 
And the interesting thing with Joe, and I think tonight when we go through this discussion a little bit, is while he's done incredible work exposing scientism with paleontology and archaeology, this topic, you know, intrigued him. But he came to the conference to learn more. He's not a believer yet, but he's like, I'm intrigued. I want to I wanna learn more about these things. So I think we're going to hear, you know, from Joe based on what he's seen, you know, on this journey, looking into this more, you know, coming here and exploring that, you know. And then with Pastor Dean Oil being able to come down to Alabama and hang out in the Alabama heat and uh, to, to really come in with all the stuff that was there, it was just a great, great time. And obviously with Rick Hummer, we've got very close. He's assisted in so many different ways. It was awesome to for him to contribute and then also, you know, be a part of a lot of the things, whether it was the uh, AV or different things that I needed. Rick's, Rick's really become uh, really close and a dear brother for sure. So. So yeah, I want to just uh, say let's let's start it off with the scientism. I thought it'd be interesting to kind of run down the panel and um, basically, you know, in just a kind of a short way, just maybe we'll we'll, we'll start with uh, John Gabrielson, and um, you know what what is what do you, for you what scientism? Well, you know, when uh, when I first met Robbie and uh, saw the topic of scientism. It really intrigued me because I'd never really stopped to think about okay, what's the difference between science and I've heard people say theoretical physicists and theoretical this and theory this and everything became theories. So I started realizing, you know, it's really like a religion. Science is, is no different than any other religion. And so it started me on my research and that's how I ran across Robbie. And so, you know, when I think of scientism, I just think of it as a religion, not as real science because it's not real science. I mean, if you go in, I mean, my son and you know, he's, he's 18 now, and he's a flat earther, uh, as I am. And, uh, you know, when he first came to this truth, he, he would start doing all the formulas, and he was going to his teachers who were teaching these theories. And he's like, well, you know what? Here's the, the, uh, the, the theory, you know, the, the mathematics behind the curvature of the earth. Well, how can you explain me seeing certain things? And he said the teachers would give him silly answers or just ignore him. Um, he never got in trouble, but he just kept questioning. And so, you know, as you start to question, uh, scientism you begin to realize they have no answers where science is repeatable you, you can uh, assert a, uh, uh, some some theory then you can prove it and you can prove it over and over and over again we see this with all the experiments that that jaron's done that rob's done that rick's done that you guys have all done that i've done so you know that's the difference it's real science where we can go out and actually see it feel it believe it and then relive it and recreate it over and over again versus these theories that are just ad hoc and they just keep piling on each other to come up with another silly theory to plug the hole of the earlier theory. Yeah, well said, John. Um, ditto. <laughs> no, what John said. We have William Shatner, Captain Kirk himself, right, saying science today is science fiction. And he said that. He went around interviewing people, you know, Michio Kaku and others. He's like, what do you do? You know, it's only Shatner can do it, you know. Uh, and he came away with, it's all in his head. The guy's just making stuff up equations and whatnot, and it's all in his head, all these theoretical physicists and whatnot. I mean, it's just, it, scientism is just, it, like you said, it's a religion. It's conjured up in these people's minds. Uh, meant to justify whatever preconceived bias they have. I mean, you have Tesla, I showed you the slide before, and others have talked about it, where he's like, you know, today scientists in his day are wandering off into equation after equation until they build something that has no basis in reality. You know, and that's where the difference is. The Apostle Paul called it science falsely so-called. And I think that's what we're dealing with with scientism. In... <clears throat> Paleontology is rife with, uh, or the study of paleontology is rife with uh, half truths <clears throat> and a lot of speculation and a lot of art. It's not that they don't deal in <clears throat> scientific things; they have laboratories and you know, things like that. But uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of imagination, and imagination is not science. Imagination might be the uh, springboard to get a scientific program going, but it's not itself science. So <clears throat> it becomes a, uh, the basis for a belief system. And once it's ensconced, which it is in most universities and most uh, national museums, etc., cetera, <clears throat> you, your paycheck becomes uh, susceptible to what you agree to. Uh, 
and I've been told this many times, I've said it many times, that if you go against the current paradigm, and uh, they've told me about the paradigms, they admit they're there, uh, you could lose your job. Well, you know, most people are not going to lose their job. And like the Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. And I think it starts there. Um, well, what I um, appreciate, of course, you know, I, when I started years ago preaching uh, as a young man. I uh, did a lot of preaching and ministering and witnessing and trying to talk to people about Jesus on college campuses. And when you do that, you're going to have to confront these uh, issues. And so I've been debating stuff like evolution and, and things like that for many years. But, um, it, you know, for me, I look at it and I see in the news, like you can look at the latest Pew Research and you see where uh, religion in general, not just Christianity, but belief in God is in decline. And it, in fact, the people that say they have no religion, none, they have no belief, is growing faster than anything. And particularly in America and the West, and that, and and when they narrowed down, the number one reason was the theories of science, the, and cosmology, and evolution, and all these things. And and more and more people are believing these theories as fact. When of course many of them haven't been proven; they're just ideas, they're just theories, they're just you know speculation. And so uh, I see it as I see it for us, particularly for the church. And, uh, and I'm talking about the true church of Jesus. I'm not talking about, the, you know, Rome or anywhere else. We see the Pope even pushing evolution and the Big Bang and uh, aliens and everything else. So there's a true church as a false church. But um, I see um, this is the David and Goliath of our era that we, we have to, like David, step up to the plate with not just a Bible verse, but with real answers, real evidence, real concrete um, you know, science, true science, tr the, the truth. And that's why, you know, just, I think that the flat earth uh, issue and, and the true nature of cosmology is so important to this generation. I think about my kids. I have a daughter that's at the University of Alabama in Birmingham um, being taught this stuff, but she she's solid, she knows, and uh, she wanted to be here today. She couldn't, uh, but... Uh, I think about her, I think about the next generation, that uh, we're going to be in trouble if we keep, we're going to be in worse trouble than we are if we keep heading down this road of exalting scientism and this religion of science versus just truth, just reality. So that's, that's where it is for me. I skipped a lot of classes. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm thankful. <laughs> I am so glad I was a C student. <laughs> and thank you, Edward Karst, wherever you are in the world, for letting me look over your shoulder to get by. Or I would have been the class of 99 instead of 90. Uh, no, with me, scientism is, to me, it's the religion of excuses. It's the religion of, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And I'm still waiting to find out where does this macro evolution, now, now let me get smart for a second, a little bit. Micro versus macro evolution. They don't want to touch base that one kind has never turned into another kind. But they give you the diagram of the chimpanzee slowly coming up off the knuckles, walking, but they never show you the chimpanzee going backwards. They never show you what, well, what was the chip before that and before that, before that, before that. They can't give you that. They just give you a piece of a puzzle that's nothing but chaos. And they give you excuses. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but. So when we look at this and like the things that you've dug up, you know, the things that you're looking at, there's it is artwork. I mean, they, they're taking they're taking making dinosaurs out of one bone. You know? So when you look at this and you say, okay, well, what, what does this mean? What, well, we've been taught this, the education system. Well, the education system hasn't changed in 150 years. It's the same principle. It's the same policy. It's the same movement. One person, rows and rows of students, follow this book. Don't go off of it. Don't go off the page or you're going to get an F. It's that simple. So with me, with scientism, yeah, it's, there's no evidence of one kind turning into another with evolution. 
And there's definitely, I don't believe in aliens. Uh, I know that there, I know that things are happening, but that's really come into play. That's become science. Like you said, Dean, you know, the Vatican's mentioned we should welcome our space brothers in. And maybe, maybe we can baptize them unless they are here to teach us something more than we know. Well, man, what book are you reading? What are you, what is your foundation on? You know, so, you know, it's about facts and science with an S isn't bringing them. It's just telling you that they're facts and they're not when you test them, not all the time. So there you go. Absolutely. And uh, I think it, it is a good way to segue uh, to talk to Joe a little bit, because I think, you know, spending all the years that he has exposing scientists and when it comes to archaeology or paleontology, um, I think it would be important maybe to start there because we will move more into cosmology and the shape of the earth. And it'll be fascinating to, to hear from Joe what he's gathering from being here and learning because he really desires to learn the truth and he really wants to understand it. So to me, it's a, it's a really uh, incredible opportunity. But again, you've spent a lot of time with archaeology and all of these facets. Maybe you could kind of go and, and explain the three big areas that you kind of, you know, with all of your work, you you spent a long time exposing and that they're trying to hide. I worked in, uh, mostly in paleontology, a lot in uh, geology, archaeology, and, and to me, really, everything is archaeology because there's nothing that isn't recorded in the Bible that's history. So our entire history has been, there's nothing prehistory, although they say that. <clears throat> um, you sort of have to look at all those together if you, if you, we're, I was just in Israel for a couple of weeks, and one of my reasons for being there was to record the geology of the entire state, which we pretty well did. What I wanted to show was uh, most of Israel is made up of sedimentary rock, mostly limestone, some sandstone, and that most of the buildings in Israel are built out of that same stuff. So how can they be older than the, the rock they're made out of? And all that rock, it's, it's so much of it, there's like 2,000 feet there's some estimates from the top of the state down to the bottom where your boat's down to the basement rock. <clears throat> it's all flat layers until it gets bent and, and rumpled uh, from the earth uh, moving around during and after the flood. So <clears throat> all these dates they give in archaeology that say, well, here's a, a ruins we found here that's uh, 8,500 years old. No, it's not. And it won't fit the Bible if they would get, if they would figure in the flood and what the flood did to the geology of Israel, they wouldn't come up with these fantastic dates if it all fit in with what the Bible timeline is. And that's the problem. <clears throat> Anything that agrees with the Bible is going to make people think the Bible is valid. Therefore, that's going to make the law of God valid, and that's the problem. Uh, as soon as you validate the history of, of the Bible, now you've validated the do's and don'ts. That's the problem. Amen. Maybe, uh, Rob, you can maybe talk about uh, the aspects of, before you came to this subject matter, what area of scientism were you most aggressive with, you know, showing the, the craziness or the fact that it wasn't holding up to the scientific method before you came to, you know, getting into cosmology and flat earth? That would go all the way back to, as I mentioned in my presentation, Kent Hovind came through town, my little Baptist church in Chicopee, Massachusetts, and gave his week-long creation versus evolution uh, seminar. And I got the whole, I think it was a 12 VHS set, <laughs> VHS back in the day. Uh, and I actually recorded all the VHS to audio cassette and I would listen to it religiously, <laughs> interestingly enough, in my car until I practically had it memorized and then would go out and, and use that material to talk to my friends. And uh, used to drive my teachers crazy because whenever I would, I would be forced to take the secular school test to pass, so they ask, you know, how old is the earth? Well, I mean, to graduate and to get the grade, I have to answer what the textbook said. So I would say, well, according to the textbook, 4.6 billion years, despite the fact that. <laughs> so. My... <laughs> I'm glad I didn't sit behind you in class. <laughs> you would have had a hard time looking over my shoulder like, what's the answer? It's a book. Just put down B, man. Yeah. So it took me a little longer to finish my test. Uh, and you know they were forced to give me the grade even though I really frustrated them because I did answer what they wanted, but I was letting them know that I didn't, didn't believe it. 
Um, so that would be my probably earliest introduction to scientism is what was being pushed on us. And I was the kid in fifth grade and said, well, if we came from monkeys, how come there's still monkeys? You know, and, you know, nobody's ever been able to answer that question. So um, then, you know, later in life, my research went into the subject of Genesis 6, just like Pastor Dean talked about. Um, that's been something that has been of interest to me for a long time. I mean, what kid isn't interested in giants, right? I mean, we all have the, the various myths and stories and legends and stuff like that. And when you see that it's actually in the Bible, I mean, David and Goliath, yeah, but there's way more than just David and Goliath going on there. Uh, and so I, I'd spent a number of years doing some real intense research on what I call the Genesis 6 experiment, what took place there. And, you know, that led to meeting people like Joe here and going to his, uh, <laughs> his his fossil uh, museum and it's a it's a replica right the big femur bone there of a human femur bone at, um, and looking through history and seeing how any evidence of the giants has been done away with like you know smithsonian vatican somebody shows up and this stuff just disappears because why i mean it validates scripture but it nullifies the the standard model so and when you look at what the standard model, I mean, it is truly a religion and it's a, a religion of intolerance. Have you guys seen the uh, documentary Expelled? No intelligence mm -hmm. allowed. If you haven't, you need to check it out. Uh, ben Stein, I used a clip from that in my presentation where Ben Stein's interviewing uh, Professor Richard Dawkins. And you see throughout that film how there are real scientists out there who recognize that there is real evidence that's contrary to whatever the standard paradigm is that's being pushed and but they can't talk about it i mean they will be expelled and you know as others have said and that's just that's not right you know so it's been a long journey but for me most of it dealt with uh, evolution as a whole and this just what we're talking about here at this conference is just one more piece of the puzzle for me absolutely um yeah we'll move we'll over to uh pastor dean and uh just if there's a certain area you know when it comes to any area of scientism before you even come to this subject matter you know what was one of the strongest kind of proofs that you were seeing that basically we were being taught lies well i'd have to say it was probably again it's evolution was always been the biggest uh for me and like i said preaching on college campuses i i uh, you know, we used to go up sometimes and I would preach at Harvard and William and Mary and Boston College and boy, it gets intense, you know, in those places. And uh, and then the one time I debated the president of the Auburn University debate team and his specialty was atheism. So, uh, you know, we had we had quite fun. So that was that was really it was evolution. Then. It really didn't get into, of course, you know, a lot of uh, cosmology because we all kind of you know, the, as Christians, we're busy trying to fit what they were telling us. We were accepting things they were telling us, but trying to fit it in Scripture instead of just reading what the Bible mm -hmm. says plainly. And uh, so that that wasn't a battle as much back then. Uh, but again, I used to think, you know, some of these things that they would say, oh, we know, we know that there's uh, planets out there, you know, 40 million light years away that are inhabitable. <laughs> how do you know that? You know, it's like, how, yeah. can, how can you know, know that it's inhabitable and stuff like that? So uh, that that's probably where uh, most it came until now. Uh, you know, yeah. Now it's a whole new. Well, and that's the thing. And that's the segue leading into, you know, the subject matter of these last two days and getting into flat earth, because, you know, all of us would agree that it's probably the upper echelon of, you know, one of the greatest lies. Um, that any, anyone can imagine. I was doing interviews out there and I'm like, can you think of anything greater as a lie than this, even hypothetically speaking? Um, so I wanted to move over to like Joe again, uh, because again, you sat in on, you know, a lot of the uh, conference sessions. And, you know, as I sit here and listen to you, it's like more of the movies coming out. So as these questions are, I got, you know, these lists and it's like, I hear the answers and it's like, you know, I don't want to spoil the surprises. So, but it's important to me to hear from Joe, because like I said, what are you taking in? What, what, is there anything that basically resonates where you're like, maybe I, I'm going to take a look at this more serious or I have more researching to do? To me, it's fascinating to hear from someone that's not in agreement but wants to learn. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff that um, I, Hold I, the mic up just a tad. I've not I've heard. I've heard things like that today that I haven't thought through. So rather than jump on something quickly, I'm going to take a look at it. I want to review the, the DVD. And I'll have a lot of questions. Um, 
I'm still trying to get my head around how the mechanics of a flat earth and the movement of the, of the sun and moon works. So either I'm too dumb or I haven't heard it yet where I really am. <laughs> <laughs> I got 130 videos online you can check out. And oh. <laughs> a website. It's a lifetime worth of work right there. <laughs> no, you know, having been involved, well, uh, I, I grew up in a family. My dad was an avid reader. He was all kinds of things. But he ran for Congress one year. And we begin to get all kinds of information that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. This opened the door to all the conspiracy stuff. I've read, none dare call it treason, none dare call it conspiracy, and that opened you know, a whole world. So we weren't afraid of that stuff. Well, whatever you got, I'll hear it. <clears throat> so I think we've, I grew up in a, in a family with an open mind. I knew everybody's religion better than they did. I could argue them into the corner and stomp them, you know. So <laughs> I, I wanted to know everything there was, in fact, uh, Back a few years ago, I started what I call the uh, Institute of Omniology, which is the study of everything. So, anything that becomes a major factor in society, or I think is going to become a major question, I want to look into it. And I think the question of the flat Earth is so uh, it is so wild to most people they can't even consider it. So I'm not looking for them to say, "Oh yeah, Joe, go look into it," because they're saying, "No, it's idiotic. Don't do it, Joe." <clears throat> but I don't care. I'm going to look into it. And I think these are the best guys to talk to. So what I say to people is don't argue against something you don't understand. Go go hear the people out. Go see it. These are not a bunch of dummies, except Rob here. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I did. Oh, okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. No. <clears throat> To me, it's important to look into things and, and, you know, here's this side. Now, there's another side, and that's part of due diligence in science, if, if I'm a scientist at all, is to know there's another side of the question. Then you have to find, well, who knows the other side very well? So that's the, the next thing is I know some guys that I think would, would at least uh, respond to all of this being said. So, okay, what do you guys think? You know, how does this answer? Can you answer it or not? So, <clears throat> uh, it's been great. Great bunch of people. And uh, some of you don't have much hair, but that's okay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that we were impressed. You got it. Right, right, it's, right. It's, we made sure that we didn't make it. I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I mean, for sake of time, I would love to ask, like, tons of questions. Uh, there's just, you know, not enough time for it all, but you're in for a real treat tonight. Like, it was a real pleasure. And again, there's people that couldn't be here, and I know they're watching live, like Dr. Aaron Jenkins. I know that he's watching, and he brought a lot of incredible stuff to this project. And I thought it was so incredible to bring people that not necessarily even believe in Flat Earth, but they want to help with the war with exposing scientism. And it was an avenue to start this discussion with people that might not be there yet, but now they're intrigued. They're going to watch this film, and they're going to say, hey, that's starting to make sense. And then we engage in conversation. We can have those discussions. So it, it's it's like really incredible for me to bring all these people together and the people that are watching on the live stream, uh, you know, to be able to do the premiere and see how it all comes together. And it's interesting as you know, ask these questions and you know, just when we we're all we're talking with Captain Kirk, I mean, you're going to see it tonight. You're going to see it and how it all came together. So I'm just kind of seeing how everything is there. You're about to see it. I'm incredibly excited about it. And it was important to me to make sure that, you know, every one of these gentlemen, everyone that was part of the film, you know, were recognized. So what I did is I got together just a little something for each one of you. Let me give you this here. Honestly, I really appreciate it. Basically, for anyone that can't see, it's just a plaque and saying that uh, I'm very, very thankful. And uh, Joe, thank you so much for all your contribution on the on the film. Couldn't have done it without you, Dean. <laughs> Rick. So anyways, I wanted you to have this. Like I said, I'm excited for the premiere. You guys were all an integral part of it, and it's exciting. And uh, I thank you so much. So again, we're going to do the, uh, the Q&A panel. We're uh, going to come back for the film premiere at 6.15, and then we got the award show. But anyways, you know, big applause for all these gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. It's good. We're, we're good. Yeah. So anyways, thank you so much.
Uh, so, do I need to make it another announcement? Yeah, that's right. Am I announcing anything else? Or can uh, I go take a picture of this and send it to well, my we mom? Have a break and then we got the, watch, uh, watch, break. the uh, watch the clip in the back. We're going to take a little break so it's yeah. not going to be an Okay. You're welcome.